shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you for the Hot Lead Zone. And in the past, we casted and we didn't do any water quenching, so water was never an issue. But since a lot of us now are water quenching our bullets, the problem with water and molten lead, we need to understand the relationship between those two and how they might mix and become a very bad situation. So that's why we're doing this video. Now this topic about water getting into molten lead causing some real serious problems is very controversial. You'll hear good eyewitness accounts about how a drop of sweat came off the forehead, fell into the casting pot, and the pot exploded. And you'll hear other stories about a drop of water causing casting pots to explode. Well, I'd like all of you out there to have full understanding about this and to reconcile all those true documentations with what the actual happenings are. Okay, so you see it's so you see it's molten, right? That's molten alloy. Now we just drip some water in there. Well, that was more than I wanted to put in, but you see what I mean. You get that funny water dense on top of the molten alloy. This is interesting. Now we're going to talk about Mythbusters a little bit, but under no circumstances should any of us ever put any part of our body into molten lead. Now remember there was a TV series uh, a while back called Mythbusters, and uh, you can actually still see that on, uh, on YouTube. But they actually dipped a hand in the water and then right into molten lead. And they didn't get any explosion of water. The reason why, there it goes, you see, it's now steaming. But somehow that water droplet was actually protecting itself because it was floating on there. And this is part of that Mythbusters thing. When they dipped the hand that was wet into the molten lead, what happened because the entire hand was wet, as long as that water had a little channel to be in contact with the air, there wasn't any chance of an explosion because what happened was it would vent the water that was heating up and turning to steam would vent right along the water interface and be able to be in contact with the air. As long as you have venting, the steam bubble cannot move lead because the lead is too heavy. But if you can find the lead down, if you can find the steam bubble down here, what you got is the power of a steam engine. That steam expands and, and the force of that expansion confined is almost like a cannon shot. Steam can move a piston. It can sure move 15, 20 pounds of lead. But on the other hand, we can be sophisticated enough to understand this. And if you do understand it, then it's not really a danger. Just keep the water from getting into the lead. If it gets onto the lead, it's not a problem. Into is poison. Avoid that by all means like a plague. Notice all my ingots over here are kept dry. They always were dry and they're on the other side of the chair from our water bucket because we don't want any water getting on anything that's going to go into the lid. Water on top of the lid causes no problem, but water in the lid is like a visit from the tinsel fairy. Lead explosions. So if you can't control the water that might get into your lead, then the best policy is to have no water around at all. But what do you do if a drop of sweat goes in there? You can't do much about that, but the fact of the matter is sweat won't make an explosion. Like I just dumped that water in there. A drop of sweat won't make an explosion either. It's water that gets into the lead and what happens is when the water gets into the lead, like in a ingot or something, it takes about three or four or five seconds before the uh, steam bubble will generate and cause the explosion. That delay causes all kinds of confusion as to why it happened. 
Now, one interesting thing I saw from Loads of Bacon and also some other caster videos in the past is that the use of a hot plate. Just imagine this thing's a hot plate and you got it set at 400 degrees. Well, that helps preheat your molds, but also it de-waterfies and de-oils any ingots that you might have. Because 400 degrees, the water's gone. You put this into the casting pot with complete confidence that uh, there's just no water getting into your lead. So if you really want the best effect would be to use a hot plate. Now I've never used a hot plate and I've gotten away with it okay because of just careful uh, water management. But if you want to do it right, the hot plate's the way to go. So the rule for lead explosion safety and prevention is never put anything into your molten lead unless you're sure it's dry and free of water and oil. We don't want you to get any visits from the tinsel fairy and get that lead explosion. This is as basic as the fortune cookie no burn policy and that is everything is hot all the time. Bullet casting is joyful, but there are few things that will ruin your day any faster than a lead explosion or a second or third degree burn. So best to you, good casting, and see you next video. Bye for now.